episode 21, Wherever You Go, There You Are. Hey, creatives. I'm C. Jordan Blacara, and welcome to the Whispering Worth to the World podcast. I'm a master certified life and artist coach who specializes in working with creatives. This is where I share what I would tell my younger self if I could, what I've learned about the art of being human, about our inherent divine equality, and how it all relates to navigating our creative expression in the world. Hey, before I get started, I want to let you know in a couple of weeks, I am going to be teaching how to stop sabotaging your big creative dream. And if you want more information, go to www.createanyway.today forward slash steps, S-T-E-P-S. That is for six steps on how to stop sabotaging your big creative dream. I heard the phrase, wherever you go, there you are, somewhere in my 20s. And I know this because it fascinated me enough to write a song about it, about that topic. So let me personal development, self-help, spiritual journey, where the levels have taken me, where the idea has moved to. And you may find yourself in that journey and it may give you some other Uh, ways of looking at this phrase. So first, for me, the way that I interpreted it was wherever you go, whatever place you go, the place was not going to magically make you happy. It was not going to magically solve your problems. But we can have a tendency to think there is going to be better than here. And perhaps more than the place, it's really whatever you accomplish, there you still are. So whether you get the record deal, whether you sell out the art exhibit, or you sell out the arena, or you get cast as a lead in a play, or you win an award for your acting, once you achieve that, once you get that, So I guess it could be said, whatever you get, there you are, right? There you are with yourself and the promise that that thing held of making things better will not actually be fulfilled. So in essence, circumstances don't change what you bring with you, who you are when you get there, who you are when you set out from your current circumstance or from your current place is the same as when you arrive at your destination. Wherever you go, you take yourself with you, and there you are when you arrive. You board the plane, you arrive in your destination, and you are the same person when you get there. So if you're a cranky person in Los Angeles, you're going to be a cranky person in Paris. If you're lighthearted and optimistic in Louisiana, you're going to be lighthearted and optimistic in Pennsylvania. If you tend to be overwhelmed and confused and indecisive, you might go on a vacation and be overwhelmed, confused, and indecisive about what to do on that vacation. So wherever you go, you take yourself with you. So then as the years went on, I was reading more and more self-help books, and eventually I became a life coach. And I began to see this phrase, not in terms of wherever you go, there you are, but wherever you go, there you think. And because I was learning that the way, whatever we think is what creates our feelings. I used to feel, I used to be such a moody person. And I just thought, that's me. I'm just moody. But what was causing my feelings of irritability, of darkness, was what I was thinking. And in describing wherever you go, there you are, I kind of alluded to that. As I became a coach, I started to understand more of my thoughts. I started to watch them. I started to become aware of them. And that's where I learned that one of my biggest thoughts was, I'm a loser. Kissing cousin of I'm not enough. Wherever I went, whatever I pursued, there I was thinking I'm not enough. 
whether it's in a job or it's in my singing career or it's on stage, looking at the faces of the people in the audience and projecting on them what I thought they were thinking about the performance and thinking about me and thinking about my songs and thinking about whether I had any talent or not. Wherever I went, there I would think, and then of course, there I would feel whatever those thoughts caused me to feel, which a lot of times was moody types of feelings. So whatever we are thinking, that thought, those thoughts come with associated feelings. So if you think a painting is going way better than you ever thought, you're going to feel great. If you think you ruined the painting, you are going to probably be disappointed or sad or mad, right? Or have dashed expectations. So I started to think wherever I go, I'm going to be thinking many, many, many thoughts, and then I'm going to be feeling whatever those thoughts are. So it's just another way that I looked at it. Don't rely on the circumstances. Don't rely on the conditions. Don't rely on the places that I may go or the achievements that I may create to create my emotional life or to make me happy because it is going to be my thoughts that are going to create whatever feelings I have. So we can achieve the pinnacle of achievement in our chosen art form. For example, if you win an Oscar, someone might say, how could anyone be unhappy winning an Oscar? The way that you can be unhappy winning an Oscar is by having the thought, oh my God, I don't know if I can do it again. Or I'm a fraud. I don't know how I did that performance. I'm not sure I can replicate it. Everybody missed the boat. It's that other actress who should have gotten it. Her performance was way better than mine. This must be some kind of mistake. Those types of thoughts can have you with an Oscar in your hand and feeling awful. Or have you ever found yourself having thoughts like, or asking yourself questions like, what's the point? Which while it is a question, what underlies that is there's no point. There's no point anyway. It's not going to work out for me. What's wrong with me that I can't get this right? There must be something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough. I'll never be talented enough. This isn't going to work out for me. And those types of thoughts can create futility, inadequacy, depression, disappointment, lack of motivation, and they can slow your creativity way down. So that was another way of me understanding myself in relationship to this phrase, which I started to alter as the years went on. Wherever you go, there you think. And based on whatever you're thinking, wherever you are, you will be feeling certain things. So that also empowered me because then if I was moody, which probably came a lot of the time from, I'm not enough. I'm a loser. Oh my gosh. So often I thought people aren't going to like me. You know, there's a phrase from Byron Katie that, or a story that she tells that she believed when she walked into a room people love me. They just don't know it yet. And when I heard that, that was so foreign to me. And I thought within myself, wow, that is the complete opposite of what I think. When I walk into a room, I think people aren't going to like me. They just don't know it yet. So talk about a point of view that can make you moody, right? It's not that fun being around people if I'm just waiting for them to figure out that I'm unlikable. So wherever I go there, I think, yeah, I get a little moody based on thoughts like that. I'm not enough. I'm a loser. You're going to dislike me eventually anyway. So let's not get too warm and fuzzy because I know this all goes south eventually. So we go from wherever you go, there you are whatever place you go, whatever circumstance you put yourself in, whatever you accomplishment you achieve, there you are. There you are being your same self underneath. And then wherever you go, there you think, whatever you achieve, there you think. So the empowering part was, okay, I can choose the way my mind is focusing. I can choose 
different thoughts. I can become aware of what I am thinking and I can choose to direct those thoughts. So that's the empowering part of that. And wherever you go, there you are is also saying, great, the circumstances aren't in charge. The accomplishments aren't in charge. So be aware of yourself. And then I got more specific in terms of looking at my thoughts, wherever I go there, I'm thinking. And if I don't like how I'm feeling, then have a look at what I'm thinking about and alter that and or be more purposeful about what I'm thinking at any given time, because it's going to be in charge of my emotional life. Next comes law of attraction, studying the magnetism, the principle of attraction and and of each person being a point of attraction. So we have a magnetism and that magnetism is based on what we are broadcasting. And if I am optimistic and happy-go-lucky, I'm going to get out in the world and I'm going to see life through that lens. I'm going to see life through my rose-colored glasses, whatever that lens is. So wherever you go, there you vibrate also moves in the direction of slipping below or behind language to the pure frequency and the pure vibration to what you are emanating and that like attracts like. So if I am calm, I'm probably going to attract more calm or I am going to be a point of attraction that walks into a room calmly from a calm standpoint. And so I will behave calmly and therefore probably receive more calm. And if I go out believing I am enough, my vibration is going to be completely different. If I go in believing I'm enough, that causes my energy field to change. And then my energy field is attracting from that standpoint of feeling worthy, feeling calm, feeling like I belong rather than something else. Now, I might be um, persnickety or irritated. And if that is my point of attraction and I walk into a room, who knows? I might get into an altercation with someone. I might get into a heated conversation with someone. I might get into some kind of interaction where we both wind up irritable and persnickety at each other. So wherever you go, there you vibrate. So I think of law of attraction as like attracts like. And so I think when I'm thinking about law of attraction, I see a magnet and I think of myself as a magnet. But the way you tell, quote unquote, tell the world what you want more of is that you need to be broadcasting that. Got my hands up and I'm pushing them out with my elbows bent and then I push them out and straighten my arms. I need to be broadcasting. Or if you think from your heart that you are broadcasting outward the same frequency that you want the universe to send you more of. So if I if I want more love, then I need to broadcast love first. And then I become a magnet for love. It comes back to me. If I want abundance, I need to broadcast the feeling of abundance, the frequency of abundance I need to vibrate abundance, and then the universe will bring it back to me. Law of attraction. So wherever you go, there you vibrate. So whatever you need to do to vibrate and to emanate the frequency of what you want more of, that's your work. So wherever you go, there you vibrate. Language is what we put on a vibration But essentially, if you think about the animal kingdom, they do have different languages. Birds have a language. Horses have a language. But it's an energetic, vibrational energy versus spoken language, whereas horses, dogs, birds, much more energetic and vibrational. And so if we can slip behind the language, if I'm emanating abundance, love, openness, creativity, and I'm tuned to that frequency with or without language, that's what's going to come back. So wherever you go, there you vibrate. So we've moved from wherever you go, there you are, to wherever you go, there you think, and therefore there you create your feelings. And then there's wherever you go, there you vibrate. And I was really looking at law of attraction 
And where this has morphed or progressed to more recently is wherever you go, there you are, an avenue of awareness for soul, source, God, spirit, your true self, your highest self. So whatever you call that one mind, that eternal energy, put that word in at the end of this statement. Wherever you go, there you are an avenue of awareness for that thing. Wherever you go, there you are an avenue of awareness for soul, source, God, spirit. And by avenue of awareness, you could also put in there, you're a vessel for that, for that spirit to, to flow through. You are a conduit for spirit or soul to flow through. Wherever you go, you are a conduit to be used by that great mind for that one source. So it doesn't matter again, where we are, because wherever we are, we're always an avenue of the awareness or for the awareness of source, spirit, soul. And that means that the circumstances can be considered good, bad, dire, fantastic, amazing, awful. They can be having pursued a music career for a very long time and feel like you're not getting anywhere. Even when that is happening, right there, you are an avenue of awareness for soul, spirit, source. And that means you can always tap into, you can always be connected to your creative spirit, to the creator, to your creator, and receive guidance. And also be used by and be moved by that which made all of us. So wherever you go, there you are, an avenue of awareness for that which made all of us. And when we are that avenue of awareness, I think that is when we can live our highest life, our highest purpose. We can create heaven on earth. We can tap into that creative spirit, that flow where the happy accidents occur, where the inspiration spirit can come into us. New ideas can come in. We can be inspired. We can find peace in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. We can find our thinking aligned with that which made us. We can find our thinking aligned with how to create that which we see in our minds, that which tickles our curiosity and that which we want, so want to bring into the material world, when we are an avenue of awareness for soul, we are in the best possible state and condition to do that and to solve the great challenges of our day, of our time. So to recap, I have gone from wherever you go, there you are, to wherever you go, there you think, to wherever you go, there you vibrate, which is also wherever you go, there you are a point of attraction, meaning take care to what you are attracting, take care to of what you are vibrating. Just as with wherever you go, there you think, take care with what you are thinking because you are causing your emotional life. So wherever you go, there you think, wherever you go, there you vibrate, wherever you go, there you are an avenue of awareness for soul, source, God, spirit. Therefore, take care that you are remind, remembering that you are an avenue of awareness. Take care to be aware. Take care to make a space to hear the still small voice. Take care to make a space. Because if you are an avenue of awareness, then that means there's something to become aware of are you taking the time? Are you taking the intention? Are you making the space? Are you remembering that you are an avenue of awareness so that you can listen, so that you can pay attention, so that you can be a vessel, so that you can be filled and use your attention 
to be aware, to be that open avenue, that open channel, that open conduit for that connection to be made, for that awareness to come in and for you to hear it. And it usually is a still small voice. So take great care. So whether you are taking care to realize that wherever you go, you are bringing yourself or to take care that where wherever you go, be aware of what you are thinking, be aware of what you are feeling. If you don't like what you're feeling, you can track it back to your thoughts. Wherever you go, take care to be aware of how you are vibrating, to what you are attracting, to how your point of attraction has something to do with that magnetism of what's coming toward you so that you can be the kind of point of attraction that you want to be. And then where wherever you go, take care to be aware that you are an avenue of awareness. And I hope this episode has helped you with wherever you go. Take care. See you next time. Hey, creatives. I will have future classes and trainings on the self-worth of the soul, as well as stepping outside of the entire paradigm most of us don't even know we're trapped in, so that we can live and create with more innovation, invention, and infinite choice. Want to know more? Go to www.createanyway.today forward slash soul. S-O-U-L. That's createanyway.today forward slash soul. Soul.